Okay, I'm originally contacted by uh, Bruce Hampton, who is the project manager for this uh, wonderful project we've been working on since 2006. And uh, he was representing a committee that had seen uh, multi-purpose venues designed with a system called VRAS, which has now been renamed Constellation. It was renamed Constellation because Meyer Sound Labs purchased VRAS, the whole company, and uh, ended up redesigning a lot of the hardware and software applications. So uh, I'm a Laguna Beach resident. This project is in Laguna Beach. Uh, they felt that I was qualified and probably would take high interest in it since there's only 25,000 people in this whole town. And so uh, I became part of the fabric of uh, several committees uh, that looks after audio, acoustics, pipe organ, the band, and uh, also not only in this sanctuary here that we've just completed, but the uh, the hall next door where they did services for two and a half years while we were rebuilding it. Well, the goal of the uh, committees that takes care of the actual services was to have a true multi-purpose venue, uh, which, would, which would include uh, the ability to have video, the ability to hang banners and things like that for special holiday services that how, how do you do that here to have a state-of-the-art audio system and a variable acoustic system so that all different types of music and spoken word could have an acoustic environment ideally suited to that. Um, and they also had their own goals of how they wanted it to look and feel. And So when I do a job, the first thing I like to do is talk a lot to people that, to discover from them what it is they're trying to achieve and then sometimes you can throw in your own input and once you've figured that out and talked to all the parties involved then you can design it and at the end you make sure that you've achieved what you wanted to. So it's not really my agenda, it's their agenda, whoever they are and then you know I just add what, I, what I've experienced and try and give them what they envisioned. Some things are possible, most things are possible, some are not. We also did a PowerPoint presentation for the committees and we talked to them about the fundamentals of sound and what benefits they would get by doing it, how, how it actually works, and we were really honest about it because I find that when it comes to acoustics and audio, people are always very foggy in their notions and um, I think there should be a lot more Mythbusters episodes about sound, personally. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I think that they... Uh, realized that for the cost of the elevator they could have a multi-purpose acoustic venue and that was quite exciting to them. So uh, this system was built in stages. In other words, in the original sanctuary we actually improved some of the uh, systems they were using to give them an idea of what we could do and then when they moved into the hall next door we did the band monitor system, uh, headset mics for the pastors, and later improved mixing and Meyer speakers in there. So they ran for two and a half years with a small but fairly sophisticated and high quality system. So when they moved into here, it was more of a copy and paste rather than climbing Mount Everest. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, systems of doing things and managing audio and music were already in place. In the church, the spoken word to me rules. I mean, everybody ha thinks they have priority. I mean, you have pipe organ people, you have choir directors, musical directors, all of that. But basically, to me, if you can't hear and understand and further are inspired and engaged by the spoken word, well, then that's mainly the point of, you know, why we're here. In my opinion, the spoken word does well between 0.8 and 1.2 seconds reverberation time. And also there's a e equalization curve to that that needs to be uh, not too heavy on the low end. Uh, on the other hand, band and choir and pipe organ would, would be better suited to consecutively much longer t times. So if you're going to have a you know, a praise band and a choir and a pipe organ and, a, and pastors talking, what time do you pick to build the church? The reverb time, the acoustics. So to me, the best thing to do is to um, 
make it quite short or dead and have it fantastic everywhere and put a constellation system in where you're basically regenerating the room's own sound or reverberation to longer times and with EQable curves and you have a controller so that each event that happens can, have, uh, can be optimized for the uh, best possible acoustic environment. The other thing is if you don't particularly like it, you can tune it or change it. Whereas with um, acoustical materials, you have one reverberation time, one environment, and if you don't like it for anything, well, then you're into rebuilding the church or the venue at massive expense. Whereas with Constellation, you can have an infinite number of presets, and all of those presets are tunable with sophisticated computer equipment like a Meyer Sim Machine and others that uh, can be tuned to anybody's preference without any kind of physical modification of the building. Every conductor in a symphony hall could have his own setting for that hall. What could be better? Um, the other thing is that the cost, I believe, to be significantly less with electronic systems. I think um, we've done a comparison on it, and a lot of them were less than half the money for a much more versatile system. The problem with the physical acoustic systems, too, is that how do you have the venue look like you want with all these physical pieces of equipment hanging from the ceiling or whatever? So I think we've done a really good job of, uh, of maintaining the, uh, the style of the venue while at the same time getting fantastic results of our goals of having a true uh, multi-purpose acoustic venue. So the Constellation system is a, has been set in this venue for five different reverb times or five different physical spaces. Uh, and we have a small LCD controller at the console where the operator of the audio console can change the size of the venue depending on what is happening at the time. So there's one preset that's off, which we never use so far. There's one that we call short, which is basically designed around the spoken word. Next preset is medium, which is designed around praise band. Long, uh, we find really optimal for choir. And very long is, uh, being has been designed for pipe organ or possibly choir pieces that are very uh, legato, as we would say. Um, but we find that it's actually become part of the audio console. In other words, you're changing the room the room's uh, reverb time based on what's happening upon the judgment of the, the audio engineer who's mixing the services. And that has, that has been very effective because it, it's a very complicated um, system in its design and application, but yet we'll be able to distill that down to five presets that are just a push of a button on a controller that runs Cat5 into the rack room. So, so that way, uh, they're able to manage the system in a, in a very simple fashion without having to really access it, you know, by computer or a very, uh, you know, more sophisticated method. They don't have a staff person here, you know, a technically uh, well-trained staff person. And that goes for, you know, there's a lighting system here, there's audio, two audio systems here, there's video here. Um, there's, you know, all kinds of different programs going on. There's, uh, there's two other venues in the complex that have sound systems, lighting, video as well. So it's a big challenge to have uh, volunteers or part-time paid people manage that. And I think that uh, in my experience on musical tours, you're going in, you're going in with skilled people, you do the show that day, you pack up, you leave. But this, I'm actually leaving here for other people to operate and uh, manage, and I think there's a lot of responsibility goes into designing it, the documentation, implementation, so they can do that, enjoy it, have great results, and, and yet uh, it doesn't overcome them in its complexity. So there is a whole facet to that that I think that's important that is often overlooked. Uh, now that it's in, uh, the reaction is, uh, is very positive, of course. The people are uh, extremely inspired and amazed that they can, you know, hear the pastors talking 
very clearly everywhere in the house because it's not only the acoustic system there's a fantastic direct system if you will too is there's two audio systems really um, and there's a lot of speakers and we're very careful when we're designing it and, and also equalizing it that it's uh, as for as much as you can the same everywhere uh, but also when the band plays or there's a cappella things they have a bell choir they have a choir um, we're using longer reverb times, of course, and we're using direct miking as well as constellation miking. And uh, we spend a lot of time optimizing that, and the result is really quite inspiring. Um, and of course, wherever you go in the venue, it sounds a little different, just like it would in any venue uh, with any of the different times. But I think, I think it exceeds people's expectations, which is fantastic, because there's nothing worse than waiting for something for years and spending a lot of money and have it not meet your expectations. <laughs>